Hello and welcome to another episode of BB's Finds. I'm Blake B. This is the only show on YouTube where a guy extemporaneously talks about his collections, um, his history behind the collections, uh, the history behind the stuff he collects uh, while sitting in a closet shared with his wife. Um, back in the closet today, I think the last video I did was the cult DVD uh, television, uh, cult television DVD video down in the garage. Um, just a little easier to access things down there because that's where most of my DVDs are. Um, the uh, the closets where um, I've got a whole bunch of stuff, including uh, some comic books, mostly newer comic books. Um, today's video is about the more modern Marvel comic books, uh, books that are um, a little more in demand than most. Um, I I'm a sort of a sort of kind of new to collecting comic books. I've been around it for a long time. Uh, in the 1990s, one of my best friends collected comic books. Um, 90s were an interesting time to collect, though, because of the because almost like the baseball card nature of it. Um, in the fact that people were speculating that, you know, like the some of the golden, bronze, silver age books at that time, the prices were rising. But of course, they weren't printing printing them anymore at that time. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in the '90s like that were speculated upon, like Batman 500, for example. That that book's probably worth about a dollar. Um, there are some books from the '90s that do retain value, or that did retain value. Um, just thinking off the top of my head, there's like you know the first some of the X Men books, like first appearance of Gambit, um, New Mutants books. Um, we got like the first appearance of Cable and the first appearance of Deadpool. So so things that are tied a little bit more into um, the, the movies, uh, the uh, cinematic versions of these characters. Um, I think a lot of that has to do, um, a lot of that demand, the economics right here, sorry. Um, a lot of that demand has to do with uh, the, the cinema stuff. Um, you know, there's going to be always kind of that tie-in. Um, for example, the Infinity Gauntlet books, the original books that were uh, sort of the basis of the Infinity Wars movie, uh, weren't really in high demand until they announced or they showed Thanos in um, some of the uh, Avengers movies. Is, is sort of like a cut scene at the end of the movies or a sort of a bonus uh, thing during the credits, credit scene. Um, so... Like I said, uh, I kind of grew, I kind of came up in the '90s with with some passing knowledge of comic books. My friend mostly collected um, Image books, so Image was kind of this third company that was, you know, there's Marvel and DC. Marvel has all the, you know, Spider Mans and and uh, Avengers type stuff. Uh, DC is Batman, Superman, Catwoman, uh, Wonder Woman, um, stuff like that. Uh, I. I do collect a lot of Batman graphic novels. Um, I think DC probably has a little better uh, narrative for their stuff, maybe story-wise, just in terms of the actual books themselves. Marvel t tends to get a little wacky, but I like I like some of that stuff, like the Marvel Cosmic, like um, for example, Adam the Adam Warlock stories, um, um, Silver Surfer stories, things like that. Um, so, 1990s, my friend collected mostly like Spawn and Max and those types of comic books. Um, we did collect comic cards, him and I. We did have some Marvel stuff and some Spider-Man cards as well. Um, so I, I, do, I did get a little bit of a passing knowledge of, especially the X-Men, um, sort of in my early years. This is right around the time I was probably playing Magic the Gathering. So I was, I was kind of getting a little bit indoctrinated into... Um, I think, you know, from that group of friends, probably a little bit of film, a little bit of comic books, and, and definitely Magic the Gathering, which has stuck with me to the day. So I, I still play online, as I mentioned in some early videos. Um, so I did have a small number of books for a number of years, brought them with me to college. It was probably like, I don't know, no more than 20 books or so. Um, and uh, comic books. And um, a couple of years ago, I, I started... Um, just buying up uh, graphic graphic novels or or what I now call trade paperbacks. There's a difference. Graphic novel is a basically a completed story uh, that's in the, the paperback format. Um, trade paperbacks are basically a, a comic books that are a collection of comic books that are put inside of a book that looks same or similar as a graphic novel. So, for example, The Watchmen. 
Um, Watchmen is actually a trade paperback. It's not a graphic novel. Um, there are single issue Watchmen comics. Um, so the, the actual book you buy, the, the thick, you know, thick Watchmen book, that's, that's really a trade paperback version of the Watchmen. Um, there are other books though, that are, that are standalone stories. For example, like Killing Joke, uh, one of the, one of the better Batman stories, um, Alan Moore did the story. Alan Moore being one of my favorite comic book writers, um, is only available in that uh, graphic novel form. So there's a little bit of a, a nuance in terms of the syntax and the way we call things um, with comic books. Um, so I started, yeah, I started collecting uh, graphic novels maybe four, five, six years ago. Accumulated a little small number. Then um, because I do a lot of thrift store stuff and I do I do a lot of reselling of DVDs and CDs and things like that. Um, I tend to hit comic book collections from time to time. Um, so I, I really got the bug, I think about two or three years ago when there was a, uh, a collection that was mostly, uh, bronze age books. There were some silver age books in there as well. Yeah. You know, the thrift store was not pricing the things up. So some, they're selling them for a dollar a piece. Um, I made about four or five different trips and in doing so, I actually taught myself a little bit about the comic book market. Um, not really, not so much from a speculative perspective, but just from a, a rough pricing perspective. There's a few resources, um, uh, online resources that you can use. Um, one of them is called Comic Book Realm. It's similar to uh, Discogs with records, uh, where you can buy and sell through there, there as well as get a gauge for um, high price, low price, and median price. Um, so that basically assists me in making my decisions in terms of purchasing. A lot of times, um, but I, I think there's probably about, I would say probably about 25% of my comic book purchases are just to read. The rest of them are, are to um, kind of accumulate and speculate on. I did have a, a little bit of a sell-off last year. I had a garage sale um, to try to just whittle down some of the single books I bought. It, there's just some titles that, that may not have been, um, you know, like some like up my alley that were included in some, some of these thrift stores have like packages where you can buy like, you know, one, um, one comic on the cover, but there's like actually four included or four or five included in the thing. And the rest of them are kind of junk, but the one, you, you know, the one, the one that you're really buying is the one on the, on the, on the front. Um, for example, there's like a reprint of a spider or, um, the first appearance of Superman uh, as an action comics book. Um, it is a reprint. It wasn't the, it wasn't the first appearance of Superman would be sitting in my closet if that was the case. Um, so anyway, uh, what I do now, um, I, I definitely have, I'm definitely more selective because I've, I've learned this over the course. I've learned a little bit about, um, what to look for in the course of, you know, the last probably two to three years of collecting single issue comic books. Um, I, I do have, my, I think my biggest thing that I like to find is Bronze Age books, if I can find them. Um, but there are a lot of modern titles that, uh, that for whatever reason, they're in high demand and they, they probably will hold value because of the cinematic tie-ins. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about a few of these books. Um, the, uh, so when I buy these books, usually I think of them as $30, $40, $50 books in terms of the market. There's a couple in here that might be a little bit more than that, um, but you know, for 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 the most part, that's where I'm going. There, uh, what what Marvel tends to do is run the what's called variant covers. Um, so the print run of a, a normal book is say I don't know half a million. Um, they'll run something that's you know every one in fifty books has a variant cover. So the the variant is is there's some 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 what's what's called manufactured scarcity. Um, almost like a chase card in, in baseball card collecting or uh, just just trying to incentivize people to look for these things and try to collect them. Um, I think I think the variant thing is a little bit hokey, um, but I guess good good on the comic book companies for for doing that if they're able to sell more books that way. Um, so let's kick it off. Um, I'm about 10 minutes in, so I gotta you know I've tried to try to hit about the 30 minute mark. Um, each video, um, a lot of, again, all this stuff is off the top of my head. This is extemporaneous, um, extemporaneously talking about my collections, my history with the collections, the history behind the collections. Uh, first up, we have a book. Um, I, I don't know how much it's worth, but I just wanted to show it. The Stanley meets Spider-Man. So Stanley passed away. He was of course the chief, uh, of Marvel, Marvel comics for many years. Um, was in, uh, 
was in cahoots with uh, Jack Kirby. Uh, Jack Kirby came up with many of the characters. Uh, Stan Lee came up with the stories. Kirby was the artist, but you know, I think for for whatever reason, Lee took most of the credit. I kind of touched on that in my uh, Jack Kirby video when I did all Jack Kirby's DC stuff. Um, so this is a this is sort of a, a unique crossover. Spider Man meets Stan Lee. Now, Spider Man it was created by Steve Ditko, but I think I think Lee has a lot of um, connection to it. Uh, he appears in the movies as, as himself, uh, cameos and things like that. So there is some cinematic connection. Um, so yeah, this is a standalone book. A uh, a it's a one of one. Um, so there you go. There you have it. Stanley meets Spider Man. Um, Stanley no longer with us, of course. He passed away. I think last January, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, next up, we have X twenty three number one. Not the first appearance of X-23, but still a book that's uh, in somewhat uh, somewhat high demand. X-23 is essentially um, Wolverine's... Uh, it's like a second Wolverine, a female Wolverine. I really do like the fact that there, um, there's more female inclusivity in, in these stories where it's not um, someone being called Blank Woman. Uh, X-23, badass character. If you've seen the movie Logan... Uh, the the gal uh, who's sort who has the same powers as Wolverine with the adamantium claws and things like that. Uh, that's Wolverine's kind of c- counterpart. X twenty three. I, I forget which book is the um, is the actual first appearance of X twenty three, but this is the first time she has her own book. Um, so you know all this stuff. By the way, I found at thrift stores. I I don't uh, do, I do buy comics at comic book stores from time to time, but they're they're always. Um, either something that, something that's like brand new, that's not, you know, worth very much money. Like for example, I read the silver server black run last year for, um, it's like a five books, five book series. I would go to my local comic book store and just buy them. And I'd also buy, uh, some, some old Jack Kirby stuff like commandies and, uh, forever people, uh, old Jack Kirby DC stuff, which I really like. Um, so X 23 right there. Uh, next up, let's see. I don't want to shake this up. Let's let's stick on let's stick on the, the the female kick side for a little bit. Um, so we have all all new Wolverine number two. Uh, this is the first appearance of Honey Badger. Uh, it's about probably about a thirty or forty dollar book on a good day. A lot of times people just donate things and they don't know the value. Uh, thrift stores don't know how to price things sometimes because they don't know what they have. And instead of just saying. Um, Instead of doing the research, which probably for for the, on the most part is not worth doing, um, because books, because most of the books they get are are fairly low value or not in the greatest of condition, they'll put them out, sell them for a dollar or two dollars. This is one of those uh, times that I I found the book and I was just like, okay, that's <laughs> that's pretty cool. First appearance of Honey Badger, uh, another character that is uh, similar to uh, Wolverine in terms of his powers, um, and there she is in all her glory. The Honey Badger, uh, all new Wolverine. This book is a, a little bit more expensive and a little bit more in demand than the X twenty three number one. I, I would say that the X twenty three, the first appearance of X twenty three. Um, again, I forget which 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 book that's in, but that that's definitely in higher demand. Um, probably worth a lot more. Uh, next up, we have. Um, what do I want to do. Um, Uh, next up, we have uh, a book that I've referred to in another video. This is uh, Giant Size Miss Marvel number number one. Uh, what's unique about this book is, um, well, it used to, uh, we'll kind of give you some context here. It was a five dollar book, and then it jumped to sixty. I saw the I saw the price jump, and I said, well, why Why did Why did a book like that for, go from five to sixty? I bought it basically just knowing that um, the Captain Marvel movie was coming out. I think I bought it maybe six or seven months before the movie was coming out. Um, there is some Captain Marvel crossover with the Miss Marvel books. Uh, now the reason is because this book contains the first appearance of the cat that's in the Miss Marvel movie. I'm sorry, the Captain Marvel movie, Chewie. Um, so that's why the book has jumped up so much in value. It's a one shot, um, one shot book. It's in very good condition. I found this at a thrift store like the others. Um, and now it's in my collection. Uh, next up we have, uh, New Avengers number 11. Uh, on the cover, you see a guy who looks like a ninja. 
this book is notable because it's the first appearance of Ronin. Uh, Ronin is the, the samurai character that was in, um, in the uh, Avengers Endgame movie. Um, i trying to remember. Yeah, Endgame. Uh, what happens is uh, Jeremy Renner's character, Hawkeye, basically just kind of goes a little recluse, reclusive um, and turns into Ronin. Uh, they track him down in Endgame. He's in Japan. I think he's trying to cause some trouble. Um, he's a little bit of like a vigilante, almost like a like a like a Punisher type character. Um, but yeah, this is the first appearance of him in comic form. Uh, the Ronin, there he is. Okay, Let's see what else I got here. I'll save a uh, I'll save a couple of these for last. Um, this, this is the one I actually found this week. Um, Thor number one. Uh, what's notable about this book is it's the first appearance of Jane Foster as Thor. Um, now, the implication is from the Endgame movies, again, that Jane Foster, who's played by Natalie Portman in the movies, uh, is able to wield the hammer of Thor, uh, Molnir, and uh, therefore she can become Thor uh, as Thor is now gallivanting with the um, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, because that they're hilarious and they're funny, and I, I really do hope uh, uh, Taika Waititi makes a, uh, a, a Guardians of the Galaxy movie with that same kind of humor as Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> that happens to be my favorite of the Marvel movies, just because of the humor, um, very reminiscent of uh, you know Monty Python type stuff, um, like what we do in the shadows, almost like uh, uh, very kind of dry. Um, kind of heady sense of humor. Um, but this is, yeah, this is uh, the first appearance of uh, Jane Foster's Thor. There's actually some what if books that were released in, I want to say the, the, maybe the late seventies or early eighties about what if uh, Jane Foster became a Thor. And now we have this where she actually is. So this is a uh, full canon. It's not a what if book. Um, next up we've got, uh, this is a, a variant, a comic bug variant, um, Black Panther number one. Uh, this is a, I'm trying to think what volume this is. It's, it's not the first, you know, the, obviously the first volume of Black Panther, but it's a, it's a newer one. Um, it's a variant, so it, 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 it kind of, variants can either add to or take away from the, uh, the value of the book, depending on what type of variant it is. But I just like to have it around. It's cool. It's a Black Panther. He's a very cool character. Um, uh, next up, we've got... Uh, from the same thing from Comic Bug, uh, this is the Edge of the Spider Verse. Uh, Gwen Stacy as Spider Woman. This is the first appearance of uh, Gwen Stacy as Spider Woman. Um, she's a. The reason this is a little bit more high uh, demand than others is because of the movie Into the Spider Verse, where there's various iterations of Spider Man among the multiverse, including Gwen Stacy, who is a character in the original. Um, Marvel books. Um, so in this in this version, she becomes uh, Spider Woman. Uh, first appearance of her right here. Uh, this is also a variant. It's a cover variant. It's comic bug down here. It's a comic shop. Sometimes there's um, variants that are, involve like different conventions, comic book conventions, things like that. Um, th this one is uh, this next one up is um, one that's kind of near and dear to me because it's one of my favorite characters um it's a it's a thanos book it's uh cover it's thanos number 15 i think they've done like either two or three volumes of the fa the thanos uh stuff but this one yeah i can't remember what year it's from the fourth printing though the fourth printing variant uh notable because the black silver surfer is on the cover uh at the beginning of the video, I was talking about how I read uh, last summer the Black Silver Surfer 1 through 5. Uh, incredible stories. Um, they're very quick to read. Uh, rec highly recommended. They're probably now in trade paperback form. Um, it, interesting stuff. Uh, very, um, you know, Marvel Cosmic-esque. Um, but this is this book's in very good condition. I found this at a Salvation Army. Okay. Um, uh, next up we have... Uh, let's see. I don't want to do this. Yeah. Next up, we have um, Planet Hulk. Planet Hulk uh, Allegiance Part One of Four. 
uh, Incredible Hulk number 100. Uh, this book is a variant cover, uh, Gray Hulk variant cover. Alex, uh, sorry, Michael Turner um, did the art for this cover. I um, believe he's no longer with us, Michael Turner. Um, but this is a this is a fairly uh, a rare book um, in terms of the variant cover. The Gray Hulk was the original incarnation of the Hulk. He later became green. I don't know why. Um, I would like to think it had to do with uh, some ink shortage or something, but I, I can't be certain. I don't know that much about Marvel's history, but this book is in fairly decent condition. I found this at, I think, the same Salvation Army I found the Thanos book at. Um, but, you know, this is this stuff like, you know, if I find some just some things to read and I find a book like this, I'm, I leave extremely happy. Um, again, I use my comic, uh, uh, comic book realm app to help me make, uh, decisions about well, whether or not to buy based on the pricing and relative rarity and things like that and demand. Um, so here it is. Uh, okay. Incredible Hulk number 100. Uh, next up we have Spider-Man 36, the amazing Spider-Man 36. This is from volume two, uh, black cover notable, um, because of, uh, it's tribute to nine 11. Um, so this is a, this is one that I hit, I think in a bigger collection. Um, when I found all those like, uh, uh, bronze age and in some silver age, mostly Jack Kirby stuff. Um, this is, a this is a, uh, kind of a memorative or mem- and it's, it's like, almost like a, like a, like a comic out of time from for a specific time place i mean this now people can see this and just kind of know that this is a tribute to 9-11 the black cover um i do also have an amazing spider-man with obama on the cover um when obama was first elected president uh so i think you know it's kind of cool when comics do that when they sort of commemorate the times um or commemorate uh current events uh on their covers uh i think for for you know, Marvel, I think I always think of them as a New York company. So I, it, it's only fitting that they would do, you know, Spider-Man being like the flagship Marvel character, at least in my mind. Um, it's only fitting that they would do a, a tribute to uh, those who um, the, fell on or those who were lost on 9-11 uh, with this uh, all black Spider-Man cover. Okay. Uh, up next, we have a book I found at the library of all places. I do like to go to... Um, library book sales from time to time library bookshops uh right now i can't do that because most libraries are closed um due to the state of the world um but uh hopefully we can get you know libraries are up and running rather quick here um at least you know the next few months to half a year time so we can actually visit them again libraries are great resources i love them so much um in the meantime we have various apps that we can use our library cards for uh wanted to give uh high praise to all of them um canopy for films they do have a lot of criterion collection films that we can watch um, a lot of classic films and things like that there's also hoopla uh, which is an app you can download comic books as well as movies and music and things like that and then uh, overdrive where you can download audiobooks and um, uh, actual books too um there, my wife uh, actually downloads i think she reads probably one paper book voracious reader by the way she reads way more than me um reads one paper book and then usually usually an electronic book uh, that's downloaded from the library um I, if you don't have a library card what are you doing <laughs> it's 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 the best I, libraries are amazing i think i think um they are very crucial uh, anyway I do like to support my friends at the library uh, because they, and I donate a lot of books to the library too, um, but I happened to be there one day and someone was donating comic books and they just got a whole bunch of new stuff in. This is Deadpool number one, the first collector's issue. Um, there was actually a Deadpool run, a limited run that came before this. I think this is 97. There was a Deadpool run that came like 95. That was like a mini mini story. Uh, first appearance of Deadpool was in... Uh, I want to say like New Mutants 86 or 98 or something like that. I can't remember the number. But uh, so this isn't anyway the first appearance of Deadpool, but it's the first appearance of a lot of the Deadpool uh, stuff from the movies. Now uh, you've got like Al, for example, and some of the some of the supporting characters um, in this in this issue. Um, so it's very cool to have. I also got that. I did get the same trip Deadpool one from uh, 95, but that's this is probably, a, you know, probably a 
$50 a book or so, and the other one's, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 bucks. Um, next up, I have a double, a double book, uh, or two of the same copy. Um, this is a uh, Wolverine, Old Man Logan. Uh, Wolverine number 66, Old Man Logan. So this is the basis for the Logan movie that came out a few years back where it takes place in the future, Logan's older. The, this, this story is actually a little bit different um, because the, the Hulk's involved and he drives this car that is able to, uh, like, uh, has to do with, like, gravitational pull and, like, Hawkeye's in it. So the, the car drives around on the ground, but it sticks to the ground so it can go down... It can go down walls and, uh, like, uh, canyon walls and things like that. The, uh, the Hulk... I'm sorry. That might be Hawkeye's car, now that I think about it. The Hulk family is sort of like this, um, sort of, like, crazy, like, meth out, like, zombie-type situation. Um, so the book's, like, way out there. I think, I think like, the, uh, like most of the Marvel movies, the, um, the ideas, kind of, the backbone from the movie kind of came from the books, but then they didn't use all the ideas because they couldn't really flesh flesh those kind of concepts out as well, maybe on the screen. But uh, this book is you know, highly sought after in terms of modern modern Marvel stuff. I would say these are, I don't know, probably like the others. I think most of these books are probably in the $50, $60, $70 range um, market-wise. And they're all in really good condition. I found one of these at a council thrift store, and I found the other one at a Goodwill. Um, so I do have a keen eye for this kind of stuff, like, Try, um, I have one of my uh, sort of the rules I live by is the more you see, the more you do, the more you know. Um, it's practice. Um, so when you when I go out and I look for things like this, I try to I almost like I feel like I'm almost like auditing what's been donated um, in terms of what the price uh, points are that the store is selling it for. Um, I mean, I feel like you know this is probably let's see how many books I have here. Let's say they have a dozen books here. I probably paid anywhere between twelve and. Twenty-four dollars for what we'll call it. We'll just call it fifty, um, six hundred dollars worth of books on the market. So I think you know that's sort of my game long term is just kind of hold on to this stuff, read it, read it, but kind of be careful in reading it because I don't want to. Obviously, um, there is joy in reading them, but there is also uh, not joy in, in damaging them. <laughs> so I, so there's sort of a, a fine line, um, but I, I do think there there in this economy um i know i've talked a little bit about this on some episodes but the economy is um right now uh in terms of collectibles i think i think things are going to hold value over time i think it's going to just going to recover i think right now people are more focused on getting cash for for what's to come or you know trying to preserve that cash or trying to acquire cash trying to liquidate their assets a little bit more um I do know that in terms of reselling things, things haven't slowed down that much. Um, I'm not selling high priced items as much, but I am selling uh, on a volume basis. I think the last two trips I've taken to the post office over the last week have been you know, six or seven items per trip. So I've, I've been doing okay there. Um, a lot of, lots of academia books, lots of kind of timely type stuff in terms of uh, like uh, learning education, uh, online education, things like that. So those are the titles that are kind of selling a little bit better than maybe they had um, uh, back, you know, around the turn of the year. Um, DVDs are also still doing well, especially sealed DVDs uh, for, for things that are out of print. Um, it, it, things that you cannot stream on streaming services. Um, I, I do buy board games. Uh, I should do a board game video soon. Um, I found a lot of cool board games. <laughs> I think the, the most recent one I found is a Dungeons & Dragons board game, uh, The Wrath of a Shardalon. Um, found that a week or so ago. It's always a happy day when I find a board game like that that's, you know, I spend like five or six bucks on that is usually like, you know, online like 50, 60, 70 bucks. Um, and I've, I do have a bunch of those as well. Um, so I've been kind of accruing a, a small board game collection here. Um, We'll do a video on that soon, but I think I think to my point about the uh, the collectibles in 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 an uncertain market, I think that the the inventory may be a little bit easier to acquire as people are selling off or getting rid of things, um, and I do think that things will recover over time. A lot of this stuff is collectible based, and a lot of this stuff is high demand when economies are doing good, when people have extra money. Um, when people are comfortable about the future and about their economic decisions and, and maybe a little bit more willing to spend on things that they enjoy. Um, I, 
I think, you know, just me being me, I, I'd like to get my collections on the cheap, um, as cheap as possible. Um, so for me, it, it, the, the acquisition of inventory and the acquisition of collect, collecting, collecting things and the acquisition of, uh, the things for those collections, um, probably best, probably best in terms of my time right now, because there is a limited number of thrift stores that are open to continue to do that. Um, occasionally, uh, I think there's saturation, you know, in terms of time, it doesn't make sense to go, you know, to the same store more than twice a week because there's not as many people out. Um, it doesn't make sense to go to certain stores because there's people that will hang out there and kind of, that's their, that's their, uh, place. And they just kind of, what I call a mill for profit. Um, well, they will just try to take anything they can get six, seven bucks, eight, nine bucks. They'll try to sell it. That's not, that's not my business model. I do not work that way. Um, but, uh, some people if that, if they can sell based on volume, that's fine for them. Um, anyway, uh, I, ho- I hope everyone's well. I hope you enjoyed seeing my, uh, comic book collection. Um, this is just tip of the iceberg in terms of what I have, uh, comic books, um, I've got, I don't know, maybe anywhere between six and 700, maybe 800 comic books. This is just some of the highlights from the modern Marvel stuff, kind of high demand books. Um, anyway, I hope everyone's well, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. If you have any questions, hit me up. Um, I'll post this on uh, Facebook, as I usually do. And um, all, any friends, uh, if you've got some comic books, want me to take a look, let me know. Bye.